Hey guys, today I wanted to talk to you and show you the setup for Barnyard Roundup. So every game, the animal bonus will be out starting in the order of the, uh, the value of the animal. So cows are five, pigs are four, sheep are three, goats are two, chickens are one. So you lay these animal bonuses out so everybody can clearly see them. Then you also set your set bonus cards of 10 plus points over here. Those will be used later in the game as you collect your sets and you can grab that card. You'll also put your action tokens out based on the player count in the game. I have this set up for a four player game as you can see. You have four robber tokens, four excuse me tokens, and one scarecrow. Your draw deck can be in the middle and everybody will have their six cards for their hand. So at the beginning of the game, you're going to turn these over, pull the scarecrow out for the moment, put everything over, give them a good mix, and every player will draw one token. After all the players have drawn a token, take the scarecrow, put it back in, again, give it a good shuffle. Now, we're re now everything's ready to begin. You pick your first player based off who's the last person to be at a farm. If that doesn't work for you, you can pick any way you guys like. On a turn, a player will take their cards and pick from their hand anything that they would like to bluff to any player they would like to bluff. So for this instance, this player may choose, they have three crows, two cows, and one pig. All cards must match and be the same when you pass to another player. So they could choose to bluff one of an animal, two of an animal, or three crows. Crows must be bluffed. You cannot pass and say this is three crows. You'll see later on why that comes to, have, comes to pass. So in this instance, let's just say this player takes his two cows, slides them over, and says, that my friend is two pigs. So this player has to decide, do I, do, are they telling me the truth or are they not? So they decide, yes. Yes, it is two pigs. Then the reveal, it was two cows. This player bluffed this player, and now this gets to start their pin. They draw two cards back up to their hand size, and play continues clockwise to the left. This player, we'll take their hand for a second. Let's see, we've got two chickens, a goat, a cow, a crow, and a sheep. This player wants to go ahead and get these crows out of their hand. Reason being is at the end of the game, any crows left in hand come down into your pen to score. And as you can tell, minus five, not good. This player is going to take this and say, this is a sheep. So this player has to decide, are they telling me the truth or not? So this player decides, it is not a sheep. You are bluffing. Flip it over, they were right. So this now comes back and that's in the pen for this player. They'll draw the card back up. So they have decided to target the player that already has a crow down. So they take their two crows and they pass them to this player and they say, Sir, that's two chickens. 100%. Two chickens wouldn't tell you a lie. This player says, Yes, yeah, I think they are chickens. Oh, they're crows. This happens here when you accumulate three crows, the farmer takes pity on you and you get to randomly draw from the middle and add to your token pile. Oh look, our player has drawn the scarecrow. Here's how the scarecrow works. The scarecrow is played immediately. It actually scares away the last three crows in your hand. So now this player has to distribute them evenly amongst everyone else. So if there was five or six players, you would get to choose or even two. So everyone else is going to get. Here you can see an example of a player pin and how it's laid out so all the other players can see what you have. This player is only lacking one goat that would complete at least one set for the set bonus. Other players may choose to target this player and slide in this is a goat. And it may be a goat or it may not, depending on what the other player's strategy might be. As you can see from this three player example, each player pin may look quite different and what you choose to target from one player to the next will change. Now let's explain our action tokens. The excuse me, the excuse me token allows you to redirect a bluff to yourself. So let's say that you have cows, pigs, sheep, and chickens in your hand and you need goats and no one will pass you a goat. 
So this player says, ma'am, that's two goats. You can flip your excuse me token in the middle, say, excuse me, I believe those are two goats. And now instead of that being directed to that player, now it comes to you and you get that deciding factor. This is the robber token. The robber token works similar to a go fish action if you've ever played that. So when you play on your turn, I would like to rob you, sir. I would like to rob you. I would like all of your five point cows. So however many cows this player has, which this player doesn't have any cows, they would have to give to that player. But in the case like this, where they don't actually have any cows, you get their crows instead. If a player has neither the animal that you requested or any crows, then they get nothing and the, the item is discarded. Anytime you use an action token, it goes back in the middle and you give the tokens a little shuffle. Anytime a player collects three crows, they draw from the middle a new token. If it is the scarecrow, then it, it is immediately played. If not, it comes into their hands secretly to use as a catch-up mechanic because the farmer wants everyone to have a chance. So every time you collect three, so on three, on six, on if you're unfortunate enough to get nine or 12, um, you'll be able to draw another action token, checking each time to see if it is the scarecrow. Oh, it's the scarecrow to scare away the last three crows in your pen to the other players. As soon as the last card is drawn from the bottom of the deck, into the player's hand after they've played cards, or even after, say, they've been robbed, or any way that cards leave your hand and you draw, the game immediately ends. Let's talk for a minute about final scoring. At the end of the game, after that last card is drawn and the game is over, any crows that are still left in your cards from your hand will enter into your pen. So that motivates you to get those crows out of your hand. Then you'll count up and hand out the animal bonuses. Here you can see this player and this player both have two cows, so the cow bonus is not awarded. This player has the most picks. This player, oh, they tied. That is also discarded. This player definitely has the most goats, and this player has the most chickens. As you can see in this example, this player collected two sets of all the animals, and so they have two set bonuses. None of the other players acquired all of the cards from the animals to get a set bonus. Now you will add up all the points from all of your cards and your bonuses to see who the winner is. And that's it guys, that's Barnyard Roundup and thank you for watching the setup video and how to play. I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to a great campaign.